Good evening and welcome to the studio this evening. I always seem to have a cup of coffee in my hand whenever I go live. That's probably because I make a cup of coffee just before I go live. And I had better turn the sound down on that because I don't want to hear myself coming back. Now then, come on, turn that off. Thank you. So I'm just uh, monitoring, well, sort of monitoring my own stream only. I'm not actually monitoring because I'm not looking at it. Good, good evening. Ah, oh dear. Lots of people disconnecting. Well, never mind. So I'm going to do some soldering this evening. I've got this... I've been meaning to try and finish this for a long time. And... Just basically, because of streaming and doing other things, I've just never got around to doing it. And I need to do it. So it seemed like a good opportunity. It was either stream whilst I solder this or not stream at all and still solder this so I thought I might as well um, broadcast it at the same time it's not going to be pretty soldering um, it's sort of hacking it about a little bit but it'll do the job um, which is the main thing so um, I've got lots of wires to connect up. I've got a breadboard version in front of me which will help me because uh, I'm going to copy the breadboard because I've got two to make this one and the one that's on the breadboard so the breadboard works so I now need to wire it up um, and it's a doorbell or rather it's a sounder for a doorbell but a special one in that um, it works over Wi-Fi so what I'm looking for is wire, which is here. I'm probably going to switch my glasses as well. So I need to uh, uh, basically, it's not a printed circuit board, so I just need to wire things up. I need to wire, I'm switching my glasses. So what we've got on this board here is three different modules. I could make them, it's easier not to bother. I've got a Wi-Fi Arduino type device, an ESP8266 as it's called. God, and I remember that. That's amazing. Um, I've got a sound generator. Basically, uh, a sound chip uh, or a chip with a digital to analog converter and memory so that you can store sound clips on there, which then under the control of this will play. <coughs> And then there's an audio amplifier to boost the sound. And this is driven from Wi-Fi, which means that I can have these, there's two of them, anywhere in the house. And I can actually hear the doorbell ring because the doorbell push button is also Wi-Fi. So it sends a signal out on Wi-Fi to the main home controller. The home controller works out whether it actually wants to play the doorbell and if it does it sends a signal out to uh, broadcast a signal out these pick it up and will then play the doorbell um, sounds complicated I know but um, that's because in the house here the house is built such that if somebody knocks on the front door and I mean knocks as hard as you can basically knock without knocking the door down you can't hear it. <laughs> uh, and to some extent, the same with doorbells. If there was a doorbell on the door. And um, so where I am here, for example, in the studio, I would not hear anybody at the front door at all. Which, if you want parcels to be delivered, is a little bit of a pain. Actually, I better switch the soldering iron on while I'm talking. Um, thank you. Which is why I've designed my own doorbell. You can buy wireless doorbells. Yes, I know. They don't. The range in this house is so small; it's not worth having. Um, I could I could put wires all over the place, but I've got Ethernet and wireless all over the place, so why not use it? So I have um, a cut-down version of one of these connected to the doorbell, running off batteries. And when uh, you push the doorbell, it uh, links up. Quite fancy in a way. Right, I'm just waiting while the soldier nine uh, settles down. Uh, and then 
what I ought to have here which will be really useful and I've been meaning to get one for about the past mm, 35 years is helping hands stand with some cro not crocodile clips yeah they're crocodile clips on so you can hold boards and pieces of wire while you solder them and they still have not got round to it after 35 years kind of the problem is I don't really use it enough to miss it enough to want to go out and get some but uh, so I'm being a little bit well not as I say I'm being a little bit naughty um, this isn't a commercial product so I'm using lead solder or, or lead tin solder as opposed to the non lead versions come on cool down a Oh, yeah, right. it'll do. Um, I thought I had a sponge somewhere. Yeah, strictly speaking, if this was a commercial product, I would have to use lead, uh, non-lead based. It's not a commercial product, so I don't. That smoke is flux, because this is uh, flux cord solder. It's not very good for you at all, but um it's a bit of a pain in the neck to set the extractor up over there in front of me in there and uh, i should do it but i'm not doing a lot of soldering still should do it really should do it you can actually get some really nice small ones small fans that suck through a carbon filter which tends to neutralize the, the compounds which is a really good idea so if you do any soldering get something like that or at the very worst just a gentle fan that will blow uh, not a really big fan because it keeps your soldering iron too cool but just a small one uh, is really good um, at least to get it so you're not breathing it now then um, so arbitrary as to what I wire up um, So that's the reset line. Okay, well, so that's on pin 13, which is that one. Which way are these labelled? That. Four, five, two, sixteen, fifteen. 15. All right, I'm going to count them then. A bit unclear. Uh, 13. Well, so that's pin 12, that's pin 13, so that wants to be in there. Or in actual, yeah, in there. So that wire needs to be soldered. So I'm going to bend it over just so it, it makes well hopefully it makes contact but at least gets closer to the pin because I'm going to bridge the connection um, between the two pads using that wire because the problem I've got here is I know the insulation is going to shrink back on the other side but has that made a connection yes it has so not very neat soldering right? soldering from that perspective um, but it's doing the job yeah oh it's not doing too bad so what I'm going to do is route this around to the reset pin which is on here which is that pin there so I actually just have to go across there I'm not going to use the battery connector on this so that's okay So it's about that he says looking for power pliers or something just to hold the wire it's about there and then cut the end off just about there and then I'll strip it I'm using a pair of wire strippers here makes life easier
rather than trying to get in there either with a knife or a, a pair of cutters or something like that which would allow me to strip the wire uh, yeah that'll do so in this particular case it's debatable whether it's a good idea to tin the wire before I put it through the hole or afterwards and hmm, do it either way really and the only thing I've got to be a little bit careful of is that the wires don't uh, bridge two of the pins that would not achieve the correct objective right, so Solder bridge. Making sure what I'm looking for is A that I've actually connected it and that it's actually a shiny joint. Um, sorry I'm trying to look on the screen but I am looking to see that the joint I've just made is, is shiny and not dull. Shiny connected, well the dull connection is a dry joint usually which means it's it's not a good connection likely to fail or be high resistance and, and basically not do what it's meant to do and that wire is actually longer than it needs to be but we'll just make it look neat it's worth with electronic projects making your wiring look neat even if the rest of it isn't. <laughs> Neat wiring tends to somehow make things look better. So if you've got a big bundle of wires, um, tie them together type of thing, or, or strap them together by some means. Makes them look a lot nicer. Run them in, in, in rows and things like that. Run them all together with some exceptions. Um, it looks better than, if I show you the breadboard, this is I mean, a jumble of wires that does not look very neat at all um, and to some extent it's the I know it's out of focus uh, it's the same modules and of course this looks a lot neater than that does and it will do so even when all the wires are in so the next one is from active to the next pin over okay so, so this whole stream is about me stripping wires putting them in holes and, uh, and soldering them So this is not the, so I'm going to put that through the next hole there. I should have done that one first before laying that wire down. So let's pick that wire up out of the way just to give myself room to get that wire in there. And bend it over. Yeah, this isn't the normal sort of thing I do on stream. I mean, I will, I do have some other things that I do need to do. Um, with the 3D printer, for example, there are some electronics to wire up there, which possibly will involve some more soldering as well. But um, don't normally do soldering in electronics. And more of craft arts and crafts so things like um, carving for example which is what I almost did tonight have a carving project to finish but I decided to have tea first and then having had tea if I'd have gone and prepped for a carving stream it would have been I wouldn't have been streaming tonight just because it takes, uh, it would have taken a while to set up. Um, because I need to screw the piece of work to a vice in order for it to work on this desk. 
but um, so I'm going from there oh I've forgotten to do that on that screen in front of me just bear with me a second whilst I stop this screen in front of me turning off that's important because it's got that's not what I'm looking for um, it's got chat window on it and if that goes to sleep I can't see the chat window which is not a good idea I don't think he says currently wondering if the microphone's turned off. Yes it is. <laughs> uh, I occasionally forget to turn the microphone on so this is going to go to what's called the activate line which is there on this module. That then um, oh I've got a serial line to connect up then as well to that so what this is doing is this module is resetting this board and telling it to operate over uh, to be controlled via a serial connection as opposed to via direct connection so i've then got the two the serial communications lines to hook up to this board and then i've just got the two left and right channel stereo pair to connect up from here onto the amplifier and then it needs to be programmed and uh, since the program is already resident on the one in front it's just a case of um, uploading the same information onto here and then up uploading a sound clip to use on uh, as the doorbell uh, so it's a relatively simple thing it's 30 seconds what well, this the doorbell currently is 30 seconds of the Beach Boys uh, California Girl because it seemed like a good tune at the time for a doorbell. Um, so that's going to go to act. So about there. Yeah, about that. So cut the wire. And then strip the end of it. So it's surprising I guess yeah. but that's the nice thing about this doorbell is I if I want a different tune for the doorbell I can change it it can be literally anything that I want it to be because I've programmed that I'm because I'm programming the doorbell myself I mean I can even do things like vary it by the time of day is a nice uh, fancy thing to do no uh, no practical purpose really but I mean it means like in winter for example uh, you know coming up to Christmas I can have it play Christmas carols instead of uh, the Beach Boys I could even have it you know do a voiceover on it you know answer the effing door <laughs> or anything like that if I really want it to do that I don't but um, <clears throat> just pull that out because one of those <clears throat> one of these strands of wire just uh, slipped loose act is that one there Yeah, it's gone through nicely. Bend it up. Where's me? There we go. Bend that over. So, for anybody not here at the start of the stream, this is a doorbell. As it, that's what the ding dong refers to um, on the channel description. Where's that wire? Is there? Um, the house here is such that I can't actually hear the door where I am here in the studio in fact in quite a lot of the house we can't actually hear the door even if somebody knocks on it really hard it's almost impossible to hear it apart from very close to the door itself and uh, 
you know, with a conventional doorbell, the, the same thing would be the case. We wouldn't actually be able to hear it. And yes, you can get wireless doorbells, but the house construction is such that they don't work very well here. And so again, uh, we wouldn't hear anybody at the door, which is um, is nice sometimes, except when you want to you want a parcel delivered. And of course, then it's a good idea to hear <laughs> anybody at the door, because you want to pick the door, you want to pick up the parcel. Um, so my doorbell works over Wi-Fi. I have designed it myself. So the doorbell push has a module somewhat similar to this, which talks to the Wi-Fi. So when you push the button, it talks to the Wi-Fi and talks to the home control server, which then decides if it's going to play the doorbell. And if it does, it sends a signal to this unit, which plays the sound. And therefore we get the doorbell ringing. Uh, and because the Wi-Fi or the Ethernet, in this case Wi-Fi, covers the house, um, it works anywhere in the house and in quite a bit of the garden as well, which is quite useful. So, and um, actually this unit, whilst it's normally powered over USB, it does have a battery connector. So what I can do is connect um, something like a lithium polymer battery because it's got an inbuilt charger as well to this uh, and it will sit, uh, I can sit a, a battery in the box that this goes in and um, I don't even need to connect it up, it can just carry the box around. Of course it, um, this takes a bit, a fair bit of power being Wi-Fi so the battery doesn't last days, you know, only last uh, a few hours but um, if you're out in the garden with a barbecue or something that's, uh, that's fine. So I've got that connected up. The next thing is actually the, the serial, two serial connections, which are coming from here. And they are going to something yeah, labeled on here. You won't be able to see it, I don't think, but that we've got a connector there that's labeled TX and one that's labeled RX. TX for transmit, RX for receive. I've just got to get them the right way around. Although if I get it wrong, I can just swap it on the programming. That's the nice thing about a microcontroller. If I wire this up with the transmit and receive backwards, for example, I just need to change the program, switch the pins over, and it will work magically. Same with these two wires that I've put in here. If I technically had put them in the wrong places, I can just uh, change the program. Of course, when I come to connect the sound up, <laughs> that's not an option. But, uh, right, so, more wire. So normally, on this stream, on my stream, on the channel, um, I normally do arts and crafts, various crafts. Although, if people really want to see electronics, and I actually don't have that much to do. Otherwise, I'd do some electronics as well. But um, I normally do things like um, pyrography, <laughs> which incidentally is not that far different from using a soldering iron. Uh, it's just a different form of it, I guess, uh, to create images in wood. Uh, which way shall I go with this? Just deciding which one to wire first. Let's wire um, so it's that pin and that pin. I might as well go there. Doesn't matter which way around I actually wire it or which end I start at. Yeah, that's the one I intended. Um, so yes, I do things like pyrography. Um, where's that wire? There it is. It's really hard to see. Uh, pyrography, wood carving, um, something called punch craft, uh, chain mail, uh, bead weaving, um, cord weaving, all sorts of um, things like that. Even building a 3D printer. And I am tending, uh, intending to do some streams 
uh, later on this year, which will be, I'm not sure, is that soldered? Yes, it has. Uh, airbrushing, um, glass engraving, and some maybe some rotary carving as well, high speed rotary carving, so using a dental drill to carve wood is something that uh, I intend to have a, well not to have a go at, but to do on stream, because it's something that I do do anyway. Uh, so they're going to connect to TXRX. To be which one's this so I've just done that white wire there so that's TX put it about there Want it reasonably accurate in length just so that I don't end up with lots of wire to sort of try and push out the way it's easier if it's a reasonably close length um, and I am hoping later this year or uh, early next year, so channel plans if you like, um, is that I will be uh, doing some glass, I will say glass work, glass, not necessarily glass blowing as such, but glass work, flame work at some point either later this this year or early next year but that depends on whether I actually find that I like it or not I said this was TX so that wants to go into that hole there so effectively this is this isn't but it's programmed like an Arduino in in the uh, C Is it C plus or C plus plus style? Um, it's actually a relative. I've now lost the wire. Oh, there it is. It's really hard to see when you're looking for a metal wire on a very shiny background like this. So I just bend it over. It'll do. Bending it over holds it in place and also makes it easier to make, to bridge the connection. Yep, yeah, I am still on stream. And I'm work, doing this around a camera, so not the best way to solder. There we go. Yeah, that'll do. happen but okay it's not bad one of the things that happens when you heat the wire up is the the insulation shrinks back away from the hot and if it does it enough you can end up with them shorting out so I'm just looking at that to make sure it's not uh, gone back far, uh, too far Because if it had, I'd have to uh, do something about it. That wasn't what I wanted to do, that was. Uh, H.C. Heraya, I think, excuse me if that's not how it's pronounced, not quite sure, oh, H. Cheraya, Cherai, Cherai, yeah, I'll probably say Cherai or Cherai, H. Cherai, thank you very much for uh, for following, that's uh, very kind of you, and of course anybody else that's watching is also of course very welcome to uh, to follow the channel.
Trying to do things with a fingertip around uh, boards is quite difficult. Um, right, so now do the receive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do... If this one shrinks back, then I'll probably end up wanting, needing to redo the connection because they're a bit close to each other. Um, but, uh, we'll see how. Yes, obviously, anybody else that's interested, feel free to uh, to follow. You'll get the Twitch notifications, of course, when I go live again. I am starting to work towards broadcasting on a, at least on a nightly basis. At, uh, so I'm aim aiming towards being able to do about five nights a week. Or maybe more, we'll see. That's generally what I'm aiming for. I'll be probably gradually building up to that rather than immediately jumping into a five night stream just to get used to it again. It's what I used to do about a year ago, but I took some time off because we moved um, house and that took quite a bit of time to do. Uh, so, I, so I'm only just, relatively speaking, just back into streaming now. I want it about that long. But um, also, if you're in, you know, if you want to uh, keep up to date with any of the uh, odd other bits of news about the stream, etc., you're also welcome, of course, to follow me on Twitter, uh, which is Zaraganart on Twitter. Same as the channel name here, so nice and easy to remember. And uh, although I am a associate now, <laughs> we still don't get to keep videos any longer than uh, normal non-associates. Uh, we don't get the, the uh, length of time that partners do. So um, I am gradually making all of the Twitch all the recordings of broadcasts on Twitch are available on YouTube. So if you want to see some of the very early broadcasts, there's quite a bit of difference in style, as you'd see. Cherry, but add, but add the H at the end. Cherry, cherry. Oh, it's Cherry, isn't it? I, I, I didn't say Cherry H. Cherry H, H Cherry H. That's that's an easy way of saying it. I was trying to be. I tell you why. Um, uh, I, I got confused. Is that bit in the middle, the cherry, is very similar to um, an author called Chiraya, I think it is, a uh, science fiction author, and um, I forgot the initials, but they're an author that I liked reading, um, and that C H E. Double R I is the start, you know, that's the start of how it's spelled. Um, I was kind of trying to say it in the same way, I think. So, <laughs> H Cherry H. But thank you for following. And sorry I mangled your name, but thank you for the correction. This mat is, um, it's cabin impregnated, I think, off the top of my head. Um, so it it resists the heat of the soldering iron if I'm soldering on it. Which means I don't burn the desk. And uh, it's a relatively flexible thing, so... Um, so what was I saying? I can't remember what I was saying. <laughs> I was talking about, you know... Oh yeah, some of the earlier videos. Um, there's quite a bit of difference in style. I didn't talk as much then as I do now. You can't shut me up these days. Um, but I've got a lot more used to streaming, of course, and uh, um, so they are gradually going up, but they take a while, and I will uh, let anybody know that watches them, they are in real time. So things like pyrography is stretched over about 10, 15, half hour videos. Um, I will at some point, as I get through the various bits, put up a time lapse of it, which will make it down to about half an hour, but uh, 
Um, you do need to enjoy watching these things in real time, but they will they are gradually going up. And again, it's Zaragoza Art on YouTube as well. So that's now wired to this. I've got to do now is wire this to the audio module. Sorry, to the amplifier. And is it? Uh, Rihanna, is it true that I hear you on one side left? You shouldn't be. You might be. Because, oh, sugar. Okay, I can't do anything about it now. Uh, uh, Rihanna, yeah, it's tr oh, true. Yes, it is true. Uh, it shouldn't be. But um, I know what's happened. Uh, yeah, earlier this week, um, you should be hearing me equally on both channels. But earlier this week, what I, uh, what I did was I put a USB 3 uh, card into the PC. And this microphone um, has a, a USB connected digital to, uh, analog to digital converter. And what will have happened is when I plug the USB card in, it changed all the configuration of all the USB throughout the whole PC. And it, it, I know it took the both cameras offline and to reinitialize both cameras. And what it'll have done is it will have changed the setting that said that's a mono microphone that you're listening to. Um, and what it should do is copy that mono sound to both stereo channels. That setting will have been reset, so it's thinking it's just the left channel. So I apologize. You are just hearing me on the left. So if anybody's got headset on or stereo set up, it will sound a little bit odd. Perhaps what I ought to do is st stand over here, maybe, make it sound better. Um, I will fix that at the end of this stream. I'm, it may well take the audio offline if I try and do it now. So I don't want to do it in the middle of a stream because then I'd be forced to reset the stream. But uh, I will fix that. Thank you for letting me know, Rihanna. Um, that's very kind of you. I will fix that for the stream and I shall have to try and remember when I upload this to YouTube to copy the audio to, to the other channel as well. Right, so um, what I'm now going to do is copy the, ste the stereo <laughs> from here to here. That, it, it's actually weird because when I first connected up the breadboard, I only connected up it's a doorbell. Why do I want stereo? I only connected up one channel. But I then put a stereo track into the memory. And boy, does it sound weird when you hear a stereo track with only one channel. <laughs> so that will be something I shall have to fix. Um, yes. Uh, in fact, just before I do it, I'm just going to make myself a note, which is fix, fix my... I thought I'd fixed everything because it also took the mic offline as well and it just never occurred to me to check the stereo settings. You like to see electronic uh, stuff? Yeah. Well, what you've got here, for those people who are watching, is three modules and to be honest these days while some of these I could actually design onto a breadboard or even uh, you know design my own circuit board I don't bother uh, for me personally it's not worth the time to design my own circuit boards for something like this which is a one-off sort of thing so I will tend to buy modules and then just wire them together so I've got it on here is I've got a stereo amplifier which is three watts of power maximum but it's been run off five volts. He it says it's not, it's been run off three volts. So it's probably only getting about half a watt of power, but that's loud, loud enough for a doorbell. This thing here is a music module. So you can, uh, it's got a memory on board as well, so you can start uh, music tracks or sound, or any, basically any sound uh, file uh, or files on here. And it can be triggered either by push buttons so this is a module that's intended for example to work with uh, I don't know if you just wanted a push button to make a noise um, 
I'm trying to think of the sort of things. It might be in like a, a, a toy or something like that where you push a button and and it speaks or you you know you squeeze it it's, it's a sort of you squeeze a paw or something and it purrs you can you know you have a switch inside the paw which is what gets squeezed so it can trigger sounds or it can talk to a microprocessor which is what this one's doing this is something called an ESP8266 it's a it's one of the most popular Wi-Fi modules uh, it can be programmed like an Arduino however um, which makes it even more easier to use so this is a Wi-Fi controller this is this is talk or when it's wired up talks to the house controller so when it gets a, a signal from the house controller that the doorbell's ringing it tells this to play a certain track which is then amplified and played out on a pair of speakers so that's that's what this is doing on the other end is a doorbell which is basically one of these on its own with a battery and uh, a doorbell push button wire it to a couple of the pins it sleeps most of the time to save power and um, only wakes up when you push the uh, push the button now then so I'm now going to weigh up the stereo pair ideally and I say ideally because I'm not going to do that you should actually wire a stereo pair up with two coaxial cables or what they call a balanced pair Um, a balanced pair would be two wires twisted together. I'm doing neither. <laughs> uh, Rianne, thank you very much for the host. That's very kind. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, what was I saying? Yes, uh, stereo pair. The, the reason why you'd use either a coax or stereo pair is to reduce noise pickup into the amplifier. So in theory, if there was a, a source of noise, and actually the microprocessors on the here are all sources of noise, then they can induce non-music um, by um, sort of a, a, an induction sort of method onto the wires, uh, and then the, the amplifier would amplify those, just causing distortion or, or just a general background hiss or hum. And... Uh, so using either a coaxial cable, which is an earth shield around it, or a twisty pair because of the way this works, um, that would neutralise the, either of them will neutralise the, uh, the interference and, uh, and therefore it doesn't come out. But I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to run them side by side. So I may well get uh, noise. But uh, this one that's in front of me is uh, a rat's nest and that uh, doesn't particularly pick up any noise so I'm not too worried. Now the one thing about this amplifier is I have to be careful to wire it up the right way around. So uh, the, ground connect this is the ground connection has to go to the right pins on here, or both ground connections go to the right pins. If I don't I'll blow up the amplifier because this is a this is a what they call a push pull. So it's a, a, a positive and negative. It's not a it's it's not a a lot of amplifiers will just have a signal and earth, and the signal pin is the one that's important. Uh, this amplifier it's it's a positive and negative, so it's what they call a push pull. Um, and if I get them the wrong way around, I will effectively short both both sides together and that will blow the amplifier chip. So I <laughs> don't want to do that. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire, I'm going to put... This is going to get awkward to, to put the wiring in nice and neatly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop this long. Solder it in, chop it long. In fact, I'm going to just make four of them the wire I've got plenty of wire so I'm just going to make them put four over long ones uh, solder them in place uh, on one end and then uh, make them match uh, so then uh, cut them to size as I wire them at the other end that, uh, well that the reason for doing that is it means I can wire them nice and neatly down here 
and then just pick the right wires that I want to go on that side. So I've got a nice large reel of wire, which gets used for lots of things. In fact, this is actually higher gauge wire then. It's thicker than it needs to be for this sort of work, but it's it's fine. Um, but it's cheaper to buy that than going into an electronic shop and buying sort of a yard of it or something like that. You almost end up paying the same amount of money. So I want to ground that. It is those four, isn't it? Yes, it is. What's the U G C S U G? U G is grounded. Okay, that must be some form of singling. Okay. Right. So I just noticed I got uh, on the prototype, which is on the red board in front of me. I noticed that um, there's a pin there, this one, which is wired to the ground for some reason. Uh, it probably puts this chip into a particular mode. So I need to I need to wire that one as well. So I've got five wires to do on this. These days, if you're working with things like Arduinos and you're working with modules like this, it's a little bit... <laughs> I find it a little bit like Lego. Uh, you just, you, you are able to just uh, plug things together. And it's almost a case of as long as you get the right voltage, don't mess up the voltage, then uh, you can... Uh, you can play about with things like this quite easily. Loop. which is one of the nice things about digital electronics when you're working with analog electronics it's um, it's a heck of a lot harder oh dear Go in that hole there. Alright, oh, we're going that way. Okay. Yeah, something called helping hands would be very helpful here. If you do a lot of electronics they're worth they are worth getting. One of the things um, you find frequently when you're soldering is you don't have enough hands. You always want at least three. And um, you always want them to be yours. <laughs> it doesn't help having somebody else hold things for you usually. Um, and of course, you don't have three hands. And you tend to sort of develop Techniques like sort of holding, you know, being able to hold two things with one hand, like you'll hold wires with, you know, um, just pick something else. You know, you, you'd be doing something like holding a wire like this and holding a soldering iron and a and solder like this and, and doing things like that. But um, you can get things called, called <laughs> you know, that feeling. Um, you can get things like uh, that effectively look like it's a metal stand with crocodile clips on it and um, they're useful because you can sort of clip the, clip one to the board which you hold it like there nice and steady and clip one to the wire so the wire doesn't move and um, yeah, I'm spending a little bit of time when I turn this over positioning it so that the wire doesn't move I've got the wire exactly where I want it when I put the soldering iron on um, but sometimes they they are reluctant, shall we say, wires to go where you want them to go, and it can get really frustrating. And you know, something like helping hands, where you can it's clapped, clamped, 
with a crocodile flip, it basically can't move. They are um, they were they're worth worth their weight. Whether they're worth the weight in gold, I don't know, but <laughs> depends on your point of view. Gold weighs a bit. Yes, I do, um, Rihanna. It's uh, at Zaragonat. So you can find me on Twitter, Zaragonat. Uh, there should be, below the stream window, there should... I was about to say there should be a link there, but I'm actually not sure whether there is or not, to be honest. Um, if there isn't, I will be putting one there at the end of the stream, I think. you can do and especially when you're wearing like this you're not a lot you can do about shrink back on wires when you're putting them through perforated board like this it's not so bad if you're if you go onto a printed circuit board uh, because what you can do it with the wires poking straight up what you can do is just reheat the solder and push the wire through a little bit more and in that sort of short length of time the wire doesn't shrink the covering doesn't shrink back but because I'm bending it over to actually make contact with the pins here, it's not really an option because if I do that, I then have to, uh, it will break the connection with this pin and I'll have to apply more solder, which then causes the shrink back. So it's kind of um, damned if you do, damned if you don't. So it's just got to be as quick as I can with soldering so I don't get very much shrink back. You send me a picture. Okay, I'm not. I won't be able to have a look just now, though. I'm afraid. Then I will. Uh, I will take a look after the uh, the stream. I don't have uh, Twitter up on this computer in front of me. See, so, I suppose I could do. Let me have a look. Let's see if I can just bring Twitter up. And have a keyboard down here somewhere. This is a touch screen in front of me, so it's not the easiest of uh, screens. Twitter.com slash So I'll look at my own uh, Yeah, I know I'm not logged in away um. okay not seeing anything day I assume you you'll be doing that shortly or in a while Rihanna so okay let me connect this one up now I've got to remember these go ground, right, left, ground. <laughs> For some reason they chose to do it that way, ground. Okay. So this is actually, I'm, I'm using... Um, I'm using lead based solder here. Now, most solder you buy most solder you buy these days is um, lead free. But I've had this reel of solder now for forty years. Uh, and I'm still got more than half of it left, so I'm not throwing it out. And the restriction on lead solder is for commercial. 
uh, soldering, not for uh, not for non-commercial, so I don't have any problem with doing it. Um, I don't. Anyway, once I'm holding it, but at the end of this stream, I'll be washing my hands be certainly before I start eating any food or anything. Um, and uh, the smoke that you see coming off is is uh, is flux, which is rosin or rosin, uh, which is a tree sap. But that's um, that's not good stuff to breathe. Uh, normally, if I'm doing a lot of soldering, I'd have a, an extractor fan in front of me, but just at the moment, it's a bit awkward to set up. So now then, so I'm not doing that. So I am being stepping back a little bit when the um, flux is going up there. So I've now got to get these the right way round. So the white connection there is minus. Okay, Rihanna, no problem. Yep, and that white connection there is also a minus. So the ground connections go to the minus. I've got to get them the right way around because if it, if, it, if I get it wrong, it bridges. It bridges the two sides together, and that could cause the amplifier chip to basically overload and blow up. Not blow up physically, but blow up as in let the magic smoke out. I don't want to let the magic smoke out. Uh, so I'm picking up right here. And, no, I want the left one. So that's that one. So I soldered these in first because then I can do is I can then pick the one and work my way down the line. So left plus minus right minus right plus. Uh, which of course is the third, so I'm working with the third wire I put in first, uh, and that's why. About there. So sometimes it's not necessarily as good, you know, to work one wire at a time. Sometimes it's a good idea to put a few, put a few in. So it wants to be about that long. So what I'll do now is cut it there and then we'll strip the end off. I'm using a pair of wire strippers here, partly because I have them <laughs> uh, and I got these a long time ago when I was doing, uh, I was creating I was building my own PC, but one of the things I was doing was um, making custom cables for the for things like all the power wiring. And um, by making custom cables, I could make them the exact length I needed, so I didn't have to you know, hide wires or anything like that, and I could route them how I wanted and generally make it a really nice, neat interior. Um, but when you're working with sort of hundreds of wires or hundreds of connections anyway, it's um, stripping them using other techniques gets really tiring and, it, and really hard to put to get them in the right, just in the position that you want. Uh, and so a wire stripper like that um, when you're stripping, you know, using a wire stripper like that makes the job a lot easier. Right, so that th uh, bother. That wants to go one further in. These wires want to go in just underneath the board. Okay, left plus from left, and that's okay. All right, we'll solder that one. Oops. 
Yeah, so that's why. So if you're doing a lot, it's worth um, it's worth buying a pair of reasonable quality wire strippers. Because one of the things these do is they hold the wire and strip it. So when if you're trying to do it with a pair of um, wire strippers or a pair of wire cutters, you tend to be tugging on the wire as well, which tends to you know pull it out of where you've just uh, soldered it into and things like that, and it gets a bit irritating. So that's left, and that's the left ground. So about there. Although I may end up having to strip these by hand because they're getting a bit short to get the strippers in. Okay, so left ground goes to left minus. Keep checking myself because it's easier to correct mistakes at this point than it is once they're soldered. And um, it's a lot easier to correct mistakes before you power it up. You are not going to go in easily, are you? Okay, I may end up having to tin this wire. And for those of you not familiar with soldering, what tinning is, is quite literally it's putting tin on the end of the wire because the solder is made out of tin and, and lead in this particular case. Um, but what it is, is you, uh, you apply a layer of some solder to the end to the wire. What that does is hold all the strands together and makes it easier to actually solder to where you're going to put it. You can actually make soldering it quicker as well. That join that's next to it, there we go. The joint that was next to it there that I'd just done a minute ago didn't actually look that shiny. It looked uh, sort of uh, dull. That usually is the indication of a bad joint, something called a dry joint. It means it hasn't really soldered, the solder hasn't really flowed in, um, and bonded correctly. And if that happens it's likely to break and or just uh, be high resistance. So right minus, so that's the ground connection for right. This is this is where you sort of wish it was wish it was the other way around. Um, ground connection for white, that's that one. Um, because these two pairs just flip over the top of each other, but. Uh, Close enough. Yeah, about there. And this is the ground. Yep, yeah, I'm putting it into the right minus. That's correct. So all I'm doing here is just twisting the wires together. Um, the only reason for doing that is when I'm trying to put them through a tiny hole, twist them together, they tend to stay together, which is good. Uh, otherwise they, they split apart and then trying to get them through a tiny hole. When some of them want to go through, some of them don't. Is uh, Awkward, that's not 
one of them doesn't want to go through and it's bent and the danger of that if you don't see it is that it might actually make contact with one of the uh, one of the other pins or other wires and cause a short circuit of some kind Nope. Done it again. So okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just tin this this wire. That will hold them together. Ah uh, welcome back Rihanna. There you go. I don't need much, just enough on the end. So when you're soldering, you don't put solder on your soldering iron usually. Oh, you you use the soldering iron to heat up the thing that you're soldering, and you put the solder on the thing that you're soldering. Um, whilst you may see me from time to time put a little bit of solder on the soldering iron, the, the, the reason for that is not so that the solder goes onto what it is I'm soldering, but it, it does something that's called wetting the soldering iron. It makes the soldering iron uh, make contact with things a lot easier if there's a little bit of liquid solder on the, the end of it. The heat transfers a lot better. So I'm holding the soldering iron like against the side of the pin and then I'm touching the pin with the solder. And whilst that's a good connection, I don't like it. I don't like it because there's not enough of contact area. It's just touching. So what I'm going to do is apply more solder. and just flood it a little bit that's better so I've got a larger amount of contact rather than the wires just sort of touching sort of like that as they were I want them to be sort of more more contact which will create a lower resistance and, and uh, also less chance of the connection breaking And then there's one thing about working near a 300 degree soldering iron is it's quite warm. So we'll put this, see if this wire will go in before I sold before I solder it. Oh, well, I need to tin this one as well. So this is right, and it's going into the right plus. The reason I want the wire to go through without tinning it really is because. But tinning it makes it more stiff, which obviously makes it easier to go through, but it makes it harder to bend on this side. And if I bend it on this side a lot easier, I can make it sort of sit alongside the, the pin which is um, makes it a lot easier to make a good contact. So 
One thing if you're buying a soldering iron, look for one with a really flexible cord. For two reasons, and that's two reasons why that's a good idea is one when you're doing things like I'm doing here. You know, I've got a connection between those two that I don't want. There we go. Um, the 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 cord, uh, a flexible cord, is a good one. This isn't fantastic, but it's better than some. Um, it doesn't sort of uh, get in your way and try and you know work over you, get over the, the get in the way of what you're soldering and soldering. Um, The other one is uh, when it's in a stand like it is over here, it doesn't try and pop out because the wire is too stiff and springy. It's also worth if you're investing in a soldering iron in to, to invest in a reasonable quality soldering iron. Um, a good one will actually last you a lifetime. Um, the better ones are the soldering stations. So that's where uh, you've got a separate power supply. You don't plug the soldering iron directly into the mains. You plug it into a, it's plugged into a soldering station. So the soldering irons usually work at a lower voltage, um, but they generally heat up quicker and they are better temperature controlled than the, the, the cheaper mains and the connected ones. So if you can afford it, it's a good investment. Um, if you can't afford it, then a soldering iron is better than none. Also, don't if you generally speaking, don't go for underpowered soldering irons. Either soldering irons you can turn the heat down on, or a soldering iron that is bigger than you need is always better um, than one that's underpowered. An underpowered soldering iron can struggle to to actually heat things up enough to solder. Uh, and then the heat becomes a problem to you because you can overheat chips and damage them and things like that. So I've got one wire left to do, which is this one labelled UG, which has to go to a ground connection. He says, checking that's right. Yes, it is ground. So it's probably it's probably a, a signal to this chip when it starts up to work in a particular mode. Uh, which I think is the one that tells it to work in serial communications mode rather than look for switches. So let's have a bit more wire. So this will be the last connection that I need to do on this board and then the board will need to be programmed. And I, fortunately I can't do that on stream so I can't actually test it on stream. I will tweet out if it works. To program it, I need to program it on the main computer, which is six feet that way. And um, I, to be honest, I don't want to have to rearrange all the mic microphone connections in order to put a microphone over there. Uh, UG is that one there. So it makes it a little bit difficult to uh, to show you the programming of the device. But since the program's already written, it really is just a case of uploading it. And then and then switching the connection and uploading a soundtrack. And since it's after nine o'clock here in the UK. I can't, even if I do connect it up, I can't go outside and push the doorbell because it's after nine o'clock and the house controller goes, it's after nine o'clock. I don't care if you're ringing the bell, I'm not going to sound. That stops people ringing the bell whilst we're in bed <laughs> and waking us up. Come on, solder to the pin. That's it. Right, so my nearest earth connection is there. So, um, 
Yeah. Thomas Gamer LT is it? Um, or Gamer IT? So I can't um, can't read the last two letters. But uh, welcome to the stream. Um, I would say good afternoon to you, um, since here in the UK it is coming up to uh, 9 p.m. So where would you be where it's now morning? Or are you doing what I what I do, which is uh, when I talk to some people, sometimes I go morning in the afternoon because it confuses them long enough to put to uh, put them off the stride and uh, generally diffuses lots of situations. <laughs> It's LT. Okay, uh, lowercase L. I can't, it's it's very tiny on my screen in front of me, and uh, I couldn't actually see it. But uh, thank you for correcting me, and uh, welcome to the studio. Welcome to the stream. Um, welcome to the uh, trying to put a wire into a hole that it doesn't want to go into stream. Okay, let's give that one a little bit of um, solder and then it will go in a lot easier. Second one. Sorry, I don't understand second one. It probably relates to something I said, but there's about a 15 second delay, so um, which probably means my memory is about 15 seconds long. <laughs> Oh, were you referring to me guessing what the letters were? I'm trying to get this to go underneath the black wire and then go in the hole just because it'll look neater than going over the top of it. And I okay, guess so I've done that, so what I'm doing now is bend that down. Don't make contact with that big blob underneath there. How about the morning thing? Saying it, saying it to confuse people. Yeah. Fair enough. I can't say anything about that when I do it myself. There we go. Nope, I don't like that. That's better. When I looked at that, then it looked it looked like it had soldered, but I could see it didn't look like the solder had flowed very far. Um, so it kind of looked like it was it kind of looked like two wires just set on top of each other and, and sort of stuck together. And I wanted it to the solder to flow, so it fused the two together. Um, right. So okay. So we've got the power connect power wires are in on both sides. This thing is supplying power because it'll be plugged in here. Oh, there's a battery plugged in either way. This supplies power. So I've got power power going there and to there. V in and ground, VDD and ground, three volts and ground. So that's correct. I then have pin 13, I think it is. Well, that one there, which is the same one, goes to the reset. That's that one there. That goes to the reset on there. So that re hold, what it, I know what it does is it holds that in reset when it's not using it, which means that it um, grounds, I think, all the outputs. So that there's no noise generated whilst it's not uh, not playing. That wire then goes to the wrong pin. Okay, I've wired that to 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 pin seven. There, it should be in act next to it. Good.
good job I checked otherwise because that wouldn't have worked. Now of course this, hmm, if necessary I'll get my soldering iron, uh, to desolder sucker out but I should just be able to pull this wire out. Should, I'm not going to be able to am I? Um, not when I'm trying to unsolder the wrong one. Okay. There we go. Always worth checking, checking what you've done. Rather than just assuming that you've done it right. What would have happened if I'd plugged this in was it basically just wouldn't have worked. Wouldn't have done what it was intended to do. So that goes to act for act active. A bit like a reset connection I think is that. I can't actually remember um, since I put these modules together in the prototype. Something like about six months ago. So I've been using this doorbell for about six months with it on the breadboard. So I figured it was about time I actually got around to wiring it into a permanent box. <laughs> I got no idea. Um, okay, let me work out what I was... Uh, where's the wire I'm trying to solder? Oh, it's there. Um, what I've got here is a doorbell. Or rather, half a doorbell. So, excuse me. I will have a look at that in just a second when I put down a hot soldering iron. Yeah, that'll do. Let me take a look at what that was. Oh, Thomas Gamer LT, thank you very much for the follow. That's very kind of you. So what we've got, what we've got here uh, is uh, half a doorbell. So this is this is the half of a doorbell that makes the sound. It's the sounder. Um, the other half of the doorbell, which is the bu the button that you push to ring the bell, is out on the front door. It's already connected up. Now this is a uh, not a usual doorbell. Most um, most usual doorbells have the sounder wired to literally wire it to the to the button i i can't do that in this house here because the the way that the house is laid out means that even if i did have a a, a sounder which is wired fairly closely to the or wired to the push button i wouldn't hear it in most of the house you only hear it in the room that's basically next to the uh, to the door. So a wired doorbell doesn't work, and you can get wireless doorbells as well, which the the push button and the sounder is, is two separate units. They communicate over a wireless. But in this house, the wall construction means that that only works basically in the next room, and that's not great you know like if i'm here now streaming for example if somebody came to my front door to deliver a parcel i wouldn't know um so what i have is i've got my own doorbell design and the front doorbell is is a wi-fi unit when you push it it connects to wi-fi it sends a signal to the home controller unit and the home controller unit looks at the time looks at his watch and goes okay I'll let the bell ring and it sends a signal to one of these units this is this is the second one I've got one in front of me which is on the breadboard um, which is here quite while they're called breadboards I'm not sure but you just poke wires in and pull them out it's really easy to connect things up and um, when this gets the signal from the controller it plays a sound track um, in this particular case, one that's 30 seconds long, and I can choose what that is. I can play anything I like. 
you know, I can play me saying answer the doorbell as somebody ringing it, or I can, as this one does, play um, a track from the Beach Boys called California Girls. So when everybody rings the bell, I get California Girls ringing, uh, playing. And at Christmas, I could change it for a Christmas Carol, for example. So what we have here is I don't design electronics these days. What I do is I put things together. It's a concept which I describe as Lego. You just put things together and then just wire them up. And electronics these days, a lot of the simpler electronics, shall we say, um, can be done that. You can go and buy blocks and then just wire the blocks together. And usually they're sort of one or two wires um, that you need to carry it up. And it's, it's not not fantastically difficult to learn them um, you know for example if I look at these they're often labeled the same thing for example I've got an R and an R over here and those two are wired together so what I've got here is I've got this thing here which is the Wi-Fi unit <coughs> so this thing talks to my Wi-Fi in the house and um, when it picks up the signal from the controller over Wi-Fi uh, what it does is it tells this to play track one of its memory and this then plays track one and this is a speaker amplifier and I have speakers plugged in the, the ends here. Um, so you where you can make it do any sound once it gets a signal. Yes, I can. Um, loudest thing in existence? No. Uh, but yes, I mean, quite literally, uh, if you, you, you know, I'm sure you, you've, even if you haven't been to one, you've, uh, you've heard on television, some of the rock concerts where they have gigantic, uh, banks of speakers and hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of watts of power. These four wires here, uh, the, uh, these four wires here, um, I could take those four wires there, connect them to one of their sound desks, and they could play it out over those speakers. That would be loud. You would hear that miles away, <laughs> as you do with most rock concerts. Um, so, you know, the, the loudness is all about the amplifier, which is this little box here. This one is a relatively low power amplifier. It's, a, it's maximum power is something called 3 watts. Doesn't sound a lot. But if I uh, if I actually run that at full power, it's too loud to be honest in a room. Um, but it's sort of you know, it, it's your average home hi-fi turned up to about nine uh, when that's um, do, uh, done there. And of course, what you you know, if you can play a, anything you like, you can you know, you, if you play sounds which sound loud, so like a um, something like a car backfiring, for example. Uh, or a um, you know a gunshot out of a game, they sound loud because of the the where they are, and you amplify those, so it sounds even louder. I play a music track; it's more fun. Um, uh, if I plug, if I if I put this into earphones, for example, it would be painful for you to hear them. If you actually had earphones in and this was turned fully up, it isn't. This is this is down quite a bit, um, but it it would be that loud. So it really depends on what you put on the end of it. You can also put this into another set of amplifiers. So, um, for example, some houses, for example, have speakers in the ceilings and they've got a central control. You could wire this into a central control so it played all over the speakers in all the house, for example. Um, n this this won't play to a normal Bluetooth speaker because it doesn't have Bluetooth. Okay. Having said that, though, although this doesn't have Bluetooth, I could replace that this module here with a Bluetooth interface, which would have probably the same four connections. And then yes, you'd be able to play it over a Bluetooth speaker um, because uh, the the Bluetooth interface would have the the the, the same sort of left and right channel speak uh, connections uh, and power. 
and so yes that's I mean that's how you would sort of build these things you know if you want Bluetooth instead of uh, speakers on here so you go to a Bluetooth speaker then you would just replace that module with one that uh, would talk Bluetooth or the potential is um, nowadays there's a new version of this called an ESP8 uh, 328 3266 or 3286 I can't remember which but that will talk Bluetooth as well so this thing uh, could do it on its own it wouldn't need either of these two uh, you would talk to the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth at the same time but yeah you've got yeah you know, this is how you you can sort of play about with this if I wanted to wire this to the front doorbell with a physical pair of wires I would only need this and this because I wouldn't need this because what I could do is this has the kit this module here which is from a company called Adafruit down this side here are connections for switches so if I connected my doorbell wires to one of these pushing it would tell this chip to play and whichever track it is that uh, I've, I've connected it to so track zero for example so I'd only need this and the amplifier uh, and that would trigger that sound uh, whatever it was and I, I use um, I plug this into the computer through a USB connection it then pretends to be a disk drive you know a USB stick and I just store the track on there um, and in actual fact Adafruit do a version of this where that's built into it so you would only need that on its own for that um, and they do them for people who do make things like props you know people who make like a, a lightsaber and they have a button on it to make that humming noise uh, and this thing plays it so you know it's for that sort of thing if you, you know, wanted a lightsaber um, you could just have that the, by the version of this that's got the amplifier built onto it I didn't buy that myself because at the time uh, I'm in the UK so I don't buy direct from Adafruit so I buy from a distributor they didn't have the one with the amplifier on so I bought it separately but it also is louder <laughs> if I need it to be louder um, so you've got you know you, you can think of these things as kind of like you know just connect this and when you read the connections and Adafruit are quite good as well because they'll they'll they give you if you look at the Adafruit website they have a learning section and they will say what this does how to connect it up they'll actually um, in a lot of cases they've got videos demonstrating what it is how they're using it to illustrate its functions so to connect this to an amplifier to a speaker to some switches um, uh, yes in fact um, I, I could do that uh, what I uh, I could make you know get another one of these have a push button alarm or um, a magnetic switch for example so when somebody opened the door the magnetic switch would cause this to play or in my case because I've already got this connected to Wi-Fi what I could do is put two tracks on here and have a switch that talks to the Wi-Fi and tells this to play track 2 instead of track 1 track 1's the doorbell track 2 is the alarm so now that I've made a sounder um, I can um, do lots of things with it, it can, um, this thing I think will handle up to 10 tracks uh, so this can make 10 different sounds for any reason that I want them to make sounds yes there's a little bit of soldering involved um, or if if you will really find soldering difficult uh, you know this is uh, this is what they call a breadboard you um, this th this is the same thing but wired onto a bread it's exactly the same thing as I've just wired down there with the soldering iron but these just um, find you know these just push in and pull out um, and that works it's been running for about six months I, I thought it was time I got around to soldering it up and putting it in a box but you can have you know it can sit like this for years with no problem at all it does invite people to pull the wires out but it's uh, it is something that you can do if you're not you know you're not really comfortable with soldering or anything 
Um, I've made this as, it's not as compact as possible, but I have sort of made it quite small. You can obviously do this a lot bigger, put it in a bigger box, for example, um, which will make it easier to wire up um, and things like that. So, you know, this, it's uh, it might look fiddly like this to do. You make it twice the size, it's a lot easier. Uh, right, um, it's now 25 to 10 here in the UK. I've actually completed this. My next job is to plug it into the computer and program it and put the sound on here before I can actually test it. Um, unfortunately, I can't do that on stream because it's over there. Uh, and to move the cameras and uh, the capture and the microphone, it's, it's too much work for what will be a few minutes of activity. Um, but I can't uh, fully test it with the doorbell because it's after nine o'clock at night and, it, and my controller doesn't uh, turns off the doorbell at nine o'clock so it doesn't disturb us uh, on an evening. So I, I will have to wait until tomorrow morning to test this fully end to end. But um, So I'm going to leave it here. Say so thank you everybody, 11.37 there. Yeah, there's one reason why you wouldn't want the doorbell ringing there at that time. So a burglar alarm and a doorbell in one, yeah. Um, they can, it could be other things, for example, it could monitor the battery charge on something and um, tell me, uh, because this is linked to the home controller, which is running all the time, I can have that do things like, for example, once an hour, check the check the check my email and see if there's any new emails. And if there is, this can play a a short tune to say you know there's something there or I could link it to Twitter for example and every time there's a Twitter message in my feed um, it could sort of make a Twitter noise or something like that w once I've got that and it's linked to the hi-fi to the Wi-Fi does uh, you know anything you think of that is good to know without actually going to a computer and checking it but only a computer can check it then um, it can make a sound for it or I can record my voice sort of say you have a Twitter message or you have an email message or somebody followed you on Twitch <laughs> sort of thing and uh, you know um, and it can it can play messages so there is you know it, it's it's not a one it's not a single purpose device it can do more than that uh, but yes, so for those of you that are watching, thank you very much. I will be wrapping up the stream now. In fact, what I'm just going to do is switch to that view there, which I had done there. So get rid of the circuit board thing. I hopefully actually I'm going to try and be on tomorrow night. I'm going to try and set up to do a bit of carving. I think tomorrow night or possibly pyrography depending on if I'm happy with the uh, with the carving environment. Um, if you'd like, obviously you can follow me here so you get notifications if you've got uh, the appropriate uh, facilities like Chrome etc so that Twitch can notify you. You can also follow me on Twitter, a message does go out when I go live so there is a tweet goes out to say I'm going live and I do from time to time uh, tweet the odd message about the stream or about uh, uh, some of the stream related activities you can find me just a simple search Zaragon Art on uh, on Twitter or twitter.com slash Zaragon Art and also um, whilst I don't sell these sorts of things some of the jewellery that I do like the chain mail which I was about to show you but you won't see I'm pointing at this circuit board and you can't see that either um, that's available uh, to purchase if uh, that's of any, any interest to anybody that's on Etsy etsy.com slash Zaragon Art sorry Zaragon Art dot Etsy dot com or just search for Zaragon Art everything's Zaragon Art so uh, even the YouTube um, site is Zaragon Art youtube.com slash Zaragon Art so um, you can find me everywhere nice and easily in the meantime again thank you all for watching hope I'll see you on the next stream which should hopefully be tomorrow night and bye for now.